Selective IgA deficiency is the most common immunodeficiency. It's characterized by a lack of immunoglobulin A, but normal levels of IgG and IgM. While most patients are asymptomatic, IgA deficiency can lead to life-threatening complications in specific settings. I'm going to give you a quick visual mnemonic so you can remember all the facts about IgA deficiency come test day. Welcome, welcome to Grandpa's Farm and Hayride. Well, this used to be a hayride. Looks like we had an accident. All the hay has fallen on the ground now. But did you notice how the hay bales are shaped like a Y? Kind of like an antibody? That's right. Since hay is a recurring symbol for the letter A, this Y-shaped hay should help you remember immunoglobulin A, or Ig hay. But don't worry, everything will be okay, because the fallen hay here should help anchor you to this scene on selective IgA deficiency. Selective IgA deficiency is exactly what it sounds like. On measurement of immunoglobulin levels in the serum, IgA levels are decreased while IgG and IgM levels are usually normal. But you don't need a separate symbol for this. The disease is called selective IgA deficiency. So IgA is the only one affected. Let's move on. Next, look at old Gramps just standing there with his cane, desperately trying to fix the hayride. His cane, for some reason, reminds me of immunodeficiency. Yep, it's the immunocompromised cane, which should help you remember that IgA deficiency is an immunodeficiency disorder. As I mentioned earlier, IgA deficiency is actually the most common immunodeficiency disorder. Since this is an immunodeficiency, you can imagine how patients might be prone to infections. Let's talk briefly about where these infections happen. Check out that girl playing with the air blower. While grandpa fixes the hayride, this girl is having a little bit too much fun. This air blower should remind you of the airway, which helps me remember that airway infections are seen in IgA deficiency. Get it? An air blower for airway? To understand why airway infections are seen, recall how secretory IgA is typically produced at mucosal surfaces. At these mucosal surfaces, IgA plays a key role as a first-line host defense. This mucosa includes that of the airway, and IgA deficiency leads to an increased propensity for respiratory infections. Next, take a look at what Gramps is doing inside that hood. He's fiddling with some sort of tubing that kind of reminds me of the GI tract. Yeah, it's all coiled and intestine-like. As some of you might have already guessed, the GI tract is another common site for infections in selective IgA deficiency. Secretory IgA's most important role is actually at the GI mucosa, where it protects the body against a variety of pathogens. Specifically, one GI infection that exam writers want you to tie to IgA deficiency is the parasite Giardia lamblia. To help you remember this fact, take a look at all these jars on the walls of the farm. Get it? Jars for Giardia? Or the Giardia jars? I guess they were using these jars for canning on the farm or something like that. Anyway, IgA is critical for fighting off Giardia infections. So if a patient comes in with recurrent steatorrhea secondary to Giardia infections, you should suspect a problem in IgA. All right, let's talk about what else can happen in IgA deficiency beyond an infection. Take a look at this boy on the receiving end of the air blower. It looks like he's having a bit of hay fever on the farm. He even came prepared with a box of tissues. The allergies here should help you remember the finding of allergies and atopy seen in IgA deficiency. Specifically, IgA deficiency has been associated with a complete allergic triad, including rhinitis, atopic eczema, and allergic asthma. With all this hay around, it's reasonable that someone gets a bit of hay fever, right? Next, I want you to notice what's in our boy's other hand. Yeah, it's a red juice pouch, which for some reason reminds me of a blood transfusion bag. Actually, this kid is not looking so hot in general. Notice how his lips and neck are super swollen and red? This picture reminds me of anaphylaxis, a feared complication of selective IgA syndrome. In particular, anaphylaxis with airway involvement and shock occurs after administration of products containing IgA, such as blood. This is an extremely high yield association, and I want you to develop a knee-jerk reaction between anaphylaxis to blood products and selective IgA deficiency. Although I mentioned airway and GI infections earlier, the fact is that most patients with selective IgA deficiency are actually asymptomatic. In short, patients can go completely undiagnosed until they are placed in a situation where they require a transfusion, after which they will experience anaphylaxis. When anaphylaxis sets in, you obviously first give the patient epinephrine. But in addition to this, exam writers also want you to assess for underlying IgA deficiency. Once the patient is stabilized, the next step in diagnosis would be to order serum immunoglobulin levels in order to confirm a selective decrease in IgA. Hashtag high yield. And that's it for IgA deficiency. Let's recap. Selective IgA deficiency is the most common immunodeficiency, and it is characterized by decreased IgA levels with normal levels of IgG and IgM. 
Patients are prone to infections of the airway and GI tract, and one bug to remember is Giardia. Other findings observed include allergic rhinitis and atopy. Lastly and most importantly, patients can experience anaphylaxis after the administration of IgA-containing products, such as blood. And that's it for IgA deficiency. I really hope Grandpa gets this hayride up and running again. See you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.